I chaired one of the sessions just now. Um, basically, what can we learn from the work in hematological cancers? It was a very interesting session. For a number of reasons, um, of course, uh, the, these cancers have been researched very intensively um, for a number of years. The accessibility of the tumor cells and the tumor stem cells, if you wish, um, as plays a role in that there is an advance um, in, in the timing that um, these molecular studies have been done. So obviously there is a longer standing um, experience in hematological cancers as to understanding some of the genetic aberrations and changes that lead to the development of these cancers. Um, Bob Lovenberg um, gave a very nice keynote lecture summarizing some of that experience and basically all of the speakers in the se session tried to uh, summarize um, what has been learned in hematological cancers, what is currently being done um, in these cancers um, in terms of um, how can this experience possibly relate to solid organ oncology. Um, a lot of the technologies that have been applied in one are also now being applied in the other. Um, there is the possibility now through high throughput sequencing to arrive at the genetic uh, makeup of also the solid um, tumors. There is a lot more clonality research. Um, there are also similarities. Even um, some of the genetic um, aberrations are one and the same um, in different diseases. There was a discussion about I the IDH1 mutation in leukemias and brain cancers, for example. Um, some of the other things um, do not apply as much, um, for right now at least. Um, the more recent developments on using the immune system, on using checkpoint inhibitors to treat solid cancers is obviously not something that we have seen um, in the hematological field very much. Um, doesn't mean that um, it's not going to happen, um, but there, there are clear differences there, of course, also. Basically, the whole s scenario from the genetic aberrations um, to the epigenetic changes um, to ways of um, applying systems biology um, or more, more gen general um, testing, functional testing, um, resistance testing um, in high throughput modalities um, uh, to the treatment of hematological cancers. Also, some of the difficulties in treating, especially um, diseases in the elderly, and um, the, the limited successes that, ha that has had in the past and where the most recent developments are in this area. Um, well, it's n not obviously we have learned uh, things um, in say in the recent uh, year or recent months um, say for example about the IDH1 mutation um, that is currently going into clinical trials um, so um, it is not this is not practice changing just yet but obviously there are a number of drugs and interventions talked about that apply both to the hematological field and also to the um, solid organ oncology. Um, it, it's, it's a mutation um, of a gene that encodes for an enzyme that um, has in its mutated form a very strong influence um, on uh, epigenetic modification of DNA. Uh, it induces a hypermethylated state and thereby affects uh, potentially um, many um, genes and their regulation. Um, and so obviously it's one of the key mutations in the diseases where it occurs. Um, and it'll be very interesting to see whether it can actually be antagonized um, effectively.
I'm uh, heading a comprehensive cancer center. And so one of the areas that we're also very closely looking at right now is high throughput um, sequencing and the application of genetic um, um, findings uh, to the clinical scenario. Another area that we're also very interested in is obviously the cancer interaction with the immune system, the question as to whether there is preformed immunity against cancers in patients and how we can address this issue um, with regards to both unleashing the immune system or if an immune um, response is absent, uh, inducing one um, if possible. It is always very interesting to come here because they're really the, the top uh, notch um, scientists um, and uh, clinical researchers in each of these areas. So it's a very neat summary of the current state of the art. And um, because it's not too big a meeting, there's also very intense one-on-one uh, -on -one discussion possible um, on, on, on some of these issues. Um, so um, it's, it's a great meeting that I always look forward to. Um, the other very interesting thing is, of course, that there, is a, there, there are collaborative clinical trials that we are also participating in um, that are addressing one of the uh, cutting-edge challenges, um, namely in combination therapy and high-throughput diagnostics. Mm -hmm. I think also there, there is a very um, interesting discussion on liquid biopsy, i.e. the possibilities of new um, genomic and proteomics technologies to perhaps access tumor tissues in ways that we haven't been ca capable of in the past, which is obviously something, again, that has been more the case in hematological cancers um, earlier that naturally tend to occur in the blood, at least in some form. Um, and um, uh, we're very much looking forward to the possibilities to introduce that in treating and also in preventing cancer in the future.